Hi guys, welcome back. This is Isa from Princetic. This video is going to talk about what digital planning is. So if you're brand new, if you've heard of digital planning, you've seen some digital planners, but you're not entirely sure how it works, today I will explain it all. So the first thing, what is a digital planner? A digital planner is somewhere where you can keep track of your monthly, your weekly, your daily tasks, your planning for a wedding, your fitness tracking, you can track your health, your meals, your work schedule, your home activities, your children's classes, anything you can think of. You can keep track of all of this in a digital planner. Now, unlike regular paper planners, digital of course means that it's located in a device. Which brings us to point number two, where can you use a digital planner? You can use a digital planner on a tablet, on a phone, or even on a computer. The ones that I personally use are iPad and iPhone. So I'm gonna stick to those for the rest of the video, but just know that you have the possibility to use Android devices, meaning Android tablets as well as phones and potentially Windows computers. But in my experience, Apple products are so much easier, so I'm just gonna stick to those. Those are the ones I always recommend and the ones that I can give you guys advice on. So once you have your device, then the third thing that you need is an app that will allow you to use the planner. Since I mentioned that I'm using Apple devices, my absolute favorite app is GoodNotes. That's the one that I use both on my iPad and my iPhone, and the one that I recommend the most because I feel like it's just the most intuitive to use and kind of the easier to start using if you're brand new. Just so you know, there are other available such as Notability, Notes Shelf 2, and Zoom Notes. Now, if you're still watching the video but you have an Android device, know that you can use Soto with Android. Many of our users are happy with it. So once you have your device, your app installed, then the next thing you need is of course a digital planner. Now a digital planner is an interactive PDF file. Interactive means that you will have buttons or you will have tabs to resemble a regular paper planner and when you tap on these buttons or links, they will open and bring you to a different section of the planner. These are the very basic items that you need to do digital planning. So your device, your app, and your planner. Now, you can also, of course, use a stylus. In this case, if you're using the iPad, you can use an Apple Pencil, and that is super helpful because it really helps you feel like it's more natural because you can take handwritten notes. However, just know that you could potentially use your finger to write, and I actually exclusively use my finger to write when I'm using my iPhone planner, but also you can add text boxes and with the text boxes you can use fonts and make everything a little prettier and I have more videos on this I'm gonna link them below in case you're interested but I'm gonna leave the stylus or the Apple Pencil as an optional tool another optional tool that you can use is stickers these are really helpful because in my case, just like in paper planning, it helps me really remember when I write things down, I can color code and mostly when I decorate a page a certain way, it helps my brain remember where I wrote what. So when I'm swiping and going through my pages of my past weeks or days, then I can easily recognize a certain thing that I wrote down somewhere because of the stickers. Obviously, you can also use the stickers to set a theme for the planner. For example, if it's winter, if it's close to Christmas and you want to decorate related to Christmas, then you can do that with the stickers. And just overall, you can make your planner prettier and give it your own style. Another optional thing that I mentioned already are the fonts. I say optional because you already have some fonts to choose from within the app GoodNotes, but you can download more. For example, what I do is I use a lot of handwritten looking fonts on my text so that it kind of looks natural and organic, but it's still a font, so it looks very tidy and neat. You can also use more standard fonts that make everything look professional and more like a text. This is why digital planning is so cool because you can really choose the tools that work for you, the style that works for you and what's best. Whatever you use today, you don't have to use tomorrow. You can change everything entirely. You can even undo a page that you did and change it to what you like better. Now, some cool things that you can do in digital planning that you cannot necessarily do in paper planning are, for example, you can easily add photos. Of course, you can do this on a paper planner, but you know, you would have to go print the photo, bring some glue, you know, cut out the photo to the size that you need and then paste it on your page. With digital planning, it's so much easier. You can simply grab one photo from your camera roll, paste it on your page, and with a tab, you can just crop it in a special shape, give it a little outline, you can do a lot. And it's very quick and easy. Well, another kind of obvious thing is that you can never again make a mistake because you can 
go back and erase anything you've done wrong or move uh, things around for example if you finish decorating your day or your week and you realize that you left something out you can just go and use your lasso tool which is this little icon right here and then you can move everything and arrange it in a different way you don't have to rip out any pages or use any whiteout or stress out about things that you did wrong you never make mistakes with digital planning and while you have some cool features here within the app for example you have the highlighting feature which is basically replicating a highlighter so you can highlight certain words certain parts of your planner you could also just draw with this tool it's kind of transparent so you can give your notes different effects another cool thing that you have within the app is this tool that is called the perfect shape and this allows you to turn your wobbly shaky hand drawn shapes into perfect ones so you can do circles squares triangles without the need of a ruler or a stencil or anything like that another cool thing you can do in a digital planner is add extra pages so the planner comes with a certain amount of pages when you buy it and you get certain monthly spreads weekly spreads and some other extra spreads that some planners might include however you can always add pages within the planner so from the planner for example if i get um, a dotted page i can duplicate this blank dotted page and add it to behind any week for example if one week i did a trip and i took a lot of photos and i can add this widespread behind that week and then add all of the photos that i want to that page you have no limits as to how many pages you can duplicate and add to your planner and keep customizing your planner now another thing you can do but i don't really advise you do is you can delete pages but this is delicate because since the planner is an interactive file if you delete or if you remove one page that is linked to a button in another page then when you click on that button you're not gonna get anything nothing is going to open because you deleted that page some pages and some planners are not linked to anything so it's safe to delete them but if you're not sure if they are or not linked I just advise you don't delete them if you really really don't want them what you can do is just drag them to the end of the planner so it's out of your way but don't delete them now if you accidentally did delete a page that was linked to something and now the link is broken you can go to your trash bin in GoodNotes recover that page and insert it exactly where it was originally and sometimes this restores the link I say sometimes because I've seen some instances when it just doesn't work again and likely you will have to download a fresh copy of the planner and you have to transfer the info from your current planner to the new planner that you just downloaded another nice thing that you get with digital planning this might be obvious but you have a ton of different ink options widths and even styles that you can choose from using the toolbar one more nice thing you can do is export your file and share it with whoever you want you can export it in a GoodNotes format so that whoever receives the file can edit the file and change it around or delete or add annotations and you can also share this file in PDF format so that means that you can send it to your printer and then print out a copy of your entire planner you can add scanned pages so that means that if let's say you're a teacher and you have documents that you have in a physical piece of paper you can scan that and then add it to your planner you have two options you can add it as a photo or a big sticker as I call them on top of an existing page and that's why it's helpful to have extra blank pages in your planner but you can also add them in between the pages of the planner as a standalone page now the only difference is that if you add it as an extra page in your planner you will of course not have the buttons and the links and all of the format of the planner so again I recommend to add them as photos on top of an existing page next I want to mention the things that you cannot do with a digital planner and I'm mentioning these ones because I get asked about them a lot one thing you cannot do you cannot add links or create buttons within the planner you cannot modify the existing file so you cannot add pages but then have buttons in the planner that will take you to those pages you do have the option to add bookmarks or favorites so that you can access certain pages with just a tap however this feature is not that helpful in my opinion so what I do is I just go to my miniatures view and I can find a page that I'm looking for a little quicker another similar thing that you cannot do is to add external links so let's say that I'm taking my notes and I want to write down a link to open a website for example I am not able to make this link interactive so that means that even though if I write this link down 
in the, in the text box, I will not be able to click on it and open a website. An alternative is that you just double tap here, open your text so you can edit the text and then you will copy the text, go to your browser and enter the text on the search bar. And in this way, you will get to the website. Another thing you cannot do is add any video clips to your planner. You can add any photos, you can crop them, you can rotate them, but you cannot add video. Now, this is something you cannot do at the moment of the filming of this video in Google notes and that is to add voice memos or voice recordings but you can do that in other note-taking apps another very disappointing thing that you cannot do in GoodNotes or any other note-taking app that I know at the moment is create reminders or set notifications to be reminded of something for example if I write down that I have a doctor's appointment at 10 a.m. I would like to get a notification maybe from my calendar app some sort of alarm letting me know that I have an event coming I get asked a lot if you can import events or appointments from let's say Google Calendar or the calendar app in your phone or iPad and and unfortunately, GoodNotes does not give you the option to interact with another app at the moment, but hopefully soon. Now, the next thing I'm going to mention is kind of something you can do with something you cannot do. So what you can do is handwrite anything you want. So you can write anything using your pencil and your own handwriting. And GoodNotes has the ability to recognize the letters and words and turn them into text. What it cannot do is take those words and leave them where they are as text. I do know of other apps that can do this, but GoodNotes cannot. So if you want to have a text box with the words that you wrote you can turn them to text first but then you have to copy that and then you can go back and add them as a text box on the page I know this one is a little confusing and honestly I never use it but know that you can do it okay guys so this video has ended I hope that this answers some of your questions regarding what digital planning is what you can do what you cannot do please let me know if I forgot something in a comment below I'll get back to you as quick as I can keep an eye out for my following videos where I will go step by step on how to get started with digital planning so don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you're notified when I upload the following video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know and thank you so much for watching. See you next time.